Hi, Lakes Church Kids, it's Miss Cindy. Happy Valentine's Day. I told you last week that it was gonna be Valentine's Day soon, and it is. Um, one of my best favorite things about Valentine's Day is homemade cards from my kids. So these are from Brookie, one to me and one to her dad. And I would encourage you to make a homemade card for your mom and your dad and all the people in your family because this is a great way to show your family how much you care and you love them. So I thought today we would start with a little game. Um, if you happen to have at home candy hearts, this is a fun little game that Miss Allie is going to play with the kids in Kids Church. Um, and I thought you would probably have some candy hearts at home. So that's all I have left because Brookie keeps coming by and grabbing them. But the game is to take a popsicle stick and put it in your mouth and then try to get as many candy hearts to stack up on the candy stick as you can. So I'm going to try it. Are you ready? Set, go. Only four. Let me try again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I fell off again. My record is eight. So see if you can beat my record. If you don't have any candy hearts at home, here's a little game that you can play that I'm going to play right now. Roses are red, violets are blue. I want to play a game. How about you? You're about to be shown several candy hearts on the screen. One of these candy hearts says, I love you. The candy hearts will then get shuffled up, but your challenge will be to keep your eye on the candy heart that says, I love you. Think you can do it? If so, let me hear you say, won't you be my Valentine? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay, shout out one, two, or three if you think you know which heart says, I love you. Great job, everyone. Let's try another one. This one will be a little faster. Oh, that was fast! Uh, did you keep track of the right one? If so, shout it out! One, two, or three, if you think you know which heart says, I love you! Oh, great job, everyone! Let's try another one, this time with four hearts! Oh, that was definitely a little trickier! Shout out the number if you think you know which heart it is. <laughs> nice job! Now, let's try it again, but a little faster. Okay, that was really tough. Uh, did you keep your eye on the heart? If so, shout it out! One, two, three, or four. Way to go! That was really challenging. But what happens if we add in one more candy heart? All right. Who knows which heart says, I love you. Shout it out if you know it. Nice job! Now, can you do it if the hearts go even faster? Whoa! Okay, <laughs> that was just crazy. Uh, does anybody know where the heart is? 
wow! Anybody who could keep their eye on that one must really love candy hearts. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Did you get some of those right? That was fun. Um, we're gonna play some worship songs here on our video next because um, sometimes we do worship at the end, but this time I kind of wanted you to get up and get moving and sing some songs. And um, oh, this first song I think has a cool clap to it. So see if you can do this. <laughs> to this song, okay? Oh. And we're going to talk about each one of these songs and how they sort of tell us the gospel story at the end. Okay, here you go. Have fun. One, two, three. God made bananas and the trees that hold the oranges in.
those are some fun songs, aren't they? So, um, if you've ever gotten a packet of the worksheets from me, you might notice that somewhere on like the second page is this page. It's called The Gospel, God's Plan for Us. And it has some different sections. And um, when I was listening to our Gospel Project gospel presentation that you're going to hear at the end of this video, I was thinking, that's really cool. We should talk about each one of those things. And then I heard those songs and I was like, that sort of tells our story. So that first song talked about how God created us and how he is good and he had a good plan. Um, and that reminds me of our Bible verse. Do you remember our Bible verse? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We've been working on that Bible verse for a few weeks now. Have you tried it on your own yet? Do you want to pause the video and try it? The second song talks about Jesus is our superhero. And if I had to combine these three things, we sinned because all of humanity has sinned. God provided his son for us and Jesus gives. Jesus is our superhero because he gives us the chance to be seen in God's eyes just like he is, perfect and holy and righteous. And he did that by dying on the cross for us, for our sins and taking the punishment for our sins. So that makes Jesus our superhero. And then the third song was how we respond. We respond by shining for him and serving. Um, we respond by accepting the Holy Spirit into our hearts and having faith that, um, that God has saved us and that we get to go to heaven with him forever. And it's not just for us. When we, um, when we accept Jesus as Lord of our lives, then it's our time to shine for him, shine his light, and to serve others, love others as he has loved us. So um, here is our Gospel Project video for the day, and it's talking about each one of those pieces. So I hope you enjoy it, and I love you guys. I love you with the love that God gives me for you, and I pray that you are um, always doing well, and I pray that God is growing you into the strong men and women of God that he's designed you to be. Love you guys. See you next week. Hi, I'm Tyler, and I want you to know that God loves you and has a plan for you. God knows your deepest thoughts and feelings, and he wants to have a relationship with you. The Bible has a lot to say about God's plan and how you can have a relationship with God by trusting Jesus. So I'm here to tell you the gospel, the good news about Jesus, and explain how you can become a Christian. The first thing you need to know is that God rules. The Bible tells us God created everything, including you and me. God is in charge of everything. There is nothing that is outside of his control. The next thing you need to know is that we have sinned, every single one of us. Since the time of Adam and Eve, every person that has ever lived has chosen to disobey God. The Bible calls this sin because God is holy God cannot be around sin. Sin separates us from God and deserves God's punishment of death. That's the bad news. But wait, the Bible also has good news. God provided a solution to our sin problem. God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to rescue us from the punishment our sin deserves. That's something we as sinners could never earn or do on our own. Jesus alone 
saves us from our sin. Another thing you need to know is that Jesus gives. Jesus lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose from the grave. He's still alive today. Because Jesus gave up his life for us, we can be welcomed into God's family now and forever. This is the best gift ever. So how do we respond to this good news? We can receive the gift of salvation that Jesus offers us. The Bible tells us exactly how to do it. The letters A, B, and C can help us remember how God wants us to respond to his good news. A, B, C stands for admit, believe, and confess. First, admit to God that you're a sinner. The Bible says we all are sinners and that we need to repent. To repent means to turn around, to change direction, to turn away from our sin. Tell God you're sorry for your sins and trust him to forgive you. Second, believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and received his gift of forgiveness from sin. And third, confess. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord. That means that you tell God and others that you've trusted Jesus to be your savior and to be in charge of your life. The ABCs can help you remember how to become a Christian. For trusting in Jesus is something that's a really big deal. And that's very personal between you and God. So if you wanna know more about it, talk to your mom or your dad or a grandparent or a teacher or your pastor. I know any of them would love to help you understand more about what it means to receive God's gift of forgiveness from sin.